my friend. What is going on today? How you feeling? How you feeling today? I trust that you're feeling amazing. We got a message just for you. My friend, thank you for joining. This is Jerome Shaw, host of the Open Palm Podcast, coming at you live with a message today on environment. Environment. What's going on, boss lady? Salute. Shout out to you. Thank you for joining. Appreciate you. Awesome. Awesome. Miss Merriweather. Hey, Nada. What's going on, my friend? Thank you for joining all the way in Perth, Australia. Greetings to you. Hey, Vibes. Greetings to you, my friend. What's happening? So, we got a wonderful message for you today, and I trust that you will enjoy it. I trust that you will be able to take a nugget from this message. And you know what? While we're at it, if you feel something from this message, if something strikes you, go ahead and comment below what comes up in your mind. Add value. Let's add value with each other. Let's have a dance of dialogue here. Let's enjoy this, these next few moments, just these next few minutes together. Grand rising to you, and I trust that you are receiving this breath today. <sighs> Collectively, as we breathe together on different sides of the globe or different sides of the hemisphere or different sides of the world, or as Nada would say, different sides of this plane, of this realm, this earth realm. <laughs> feel like I'm talking about Mortal Kombat. Earth Realm. For Earth Realm. <laughs> All right. What's going on, Adrian? Thank you for joining Grand Rising to you. Hey there, Karen. Great day to you. And what's happening? Awesome. Danny. That must be Danny there. The Harlem Harris. What's goody? <laughs> so, my friend, enjoy this message here. This message came through, actually, it was inspired by one of my good friends, Rachel Krylov over there in Texas, where they do everything big in Texas. Shout out to Rachel in Austin. And it's talking about environment. Now, this quote is a simple one, but it has a profound implication. Hey, Lewis, what's happening? Grand rising to you. Check out this quote here. And let us know what comes up for you when you hear it. When a flower does not bloom, you fix the environment in which it grows, not the flower, right? Nothing's wrong with the flower if it does not grow, but there may be something wrong in the environment in which it is striving to grow. So what do you do if a flower is in soil that is not conducive for conductivity, for its own fertility, fertile soil, right? How do you replant this flower? Like a rose struggling to thrive in the Dubai desert. It's tough to grow. So when a flower doesn't bloom, you fix the environment in which it grows, not the flower. Have you ever found yourself in the wrong environment for growth? The environment that wasn't pushing you, wasn't propelling you forward, but instead felt like your environment, your circle of influence, your circle of friends, your peer group, were pulling you back. Have you ever felt the constant pressure and negativity of an environment? Almost having you in a stranglehold, gasping for air <gasps> in this environment. Having you searching for Moisture, searching for something to water you, right? You're a plant out here. It's our opportunity. It's our 
birthright, to grow, to experience life. But if we are in the wrong environment, how hard is it? How much adversity must we push past? They say you cannot thrive in an environment that is not nourishing you. It's hard to be healthy in the same environment that made you sick. Are we thriving or just surviving? What is your environment like in life? What are your circle of friends like? And are they people that you wish to be around? Are they people that talk about other people? Are they people that talk about situations, circumstances? Are they people that talk about ideas, progress, the future? Or are they people that dwell on the past? Are they people that gossip? Or are they people that discuss greatness? Are they people that push you? Are they people that believe in your potential, that are rooting for you, that are cheering you on? Or are they people that are downing you, right? Like they say, the only reason you should look down on a person is if you are lifting them up. So who do you have around you? And how could you grow more efficiently and effectively if you had the right environment? We are defined by the company we keep. They say, show me your friends and I'll show you your future. Through our environments, we inherit their beliefs and those beliefs become a part of our subconscious mind. The subconscious mind is so powerful. I really don't think people underestimate, like I think people don't realize and take it for granted that it is governing everything. It hears everything, it sees everything. It's absorbing everything, right? Your subconscious mind is like SpongeBob. I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. It's taking in all the information in the surrounding environment. And it's going to project and reflect everything that comes in. What comes out is what's inside, right? Just like when you squeeze an orange, you get orange juice. You squeeze a grape, you get grape juice. There's never been a time where someone has squeezed a grape and got apple juice from squeezing a grape because that is not what's inside. So what comes out is what's inside. When your environment is constantly influencing you and impacting you in the negative fashion, right? Always talking about the news, different things going on that are negative, right? Never focusing on the positive. Always telling you the things that are going wrong in life. The things that are going wrong in relationships, the things that they have problems with, with you. The things that you could correct, always criticizing, right? Are you in the right environment? And all those things, those influences are seeping into your psyche, seeping into your subconscious mind. So when life puts pressure on you, right? When life puts stress on you, when life is trying to bring the diamond out, what comes out is what's inside. If anger comes out, it was already inside. If frustration comes out, it was inside already. But if love, peace, gratitude, joy, if these things comes out, they were already inside. So the subconscious mind is governing everything. It sees all, it sees everything. It doesn't miss a beat, right? It's like a DJ. It's not missing a beat, right? Subconscious mind is on the ones and twos always. Like a constant DJ. It's picking up everything. It's reading the crowd. It's feeling the music, 
right? It's tapped in, it's tuned in. But what we tune into, we turn into. And whatever entertains us, trains us. So if our environment is not conducive for conductivity, if it is not for our education, for our benefit, for the bettering of our lives, is it bringing us down? Is it a burden? Is it weighing us down? Do you feel pressure not to propel yourself forward, but do you feel pressure weighing you down in life? due to your circle of influence, your circle of friends. They say we are the sum total of the five people we hang out with. If you hang around four individuals who have a broke mentality, who have a poor mindset, who are ungrateful, you best believe you are the fifth. So influence your subconscious mind for the better, for the positive, for growth, for greatness. You cannot change the people around you. No, 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 no. (laughs) I mean, we think about how hard it is to change ourselves, right? So think about how impossible it must be to change someone else. No, you can't change the people around you but you can change the people you choose to be around. You know, this previous weekend reestablished the importance within me to have the right environment, to be around the people who are going somewhere. A lot of times things happen in your life that you feel, that you perceive are negative, but it's like, crushing the olive, right, to extract the oil. It is bringing it out of you. You perceive these situations and circumstances to be negative, but it's, it's polishing you. It's, it's, it's really hardening you. It's sharpening you. And iron sharpens iron. So how will iron sharpen iron? How will you stay sharp if you're hanging around a group of butter knives, (laughs) right? How will you stay sharp, right? You gotta sharpen yourself. Stick around people who are sharp. Stick around people who are going somewhere. And sometimes certain things don't happen in other people's lives because they're not going anywhere. They've chosen to stay where they are. I mean, I'm sure you might have met people and known people who you met in the same neighborhood years ago, they're in the same neighborhood today, talking about the same things, having the same hopes, the same wishes, the same dreams. Years from now, where will they be? Will they still be in the same environment? Wishing, hoping, praying for a return on their investment that they have not given? In order to change the things around you. In order to see a change in your life, you must change. In order to have different things, we must do different things. Get around different people, like-minded individuals who are going somewhere. And understand that when you get around these people, you adopt not only their characteristics, their traits, their personalities, but their values. You realize that sooner than later, there is a paradigm shift. You are all of a sudden going somewhere. When you might have felt stuck in your ways, you might have felt bombarded by all the distractions. You know, distraction is the opposite of traction. But now you are uncoupled. Now the train is on the move. And you are unstoppable in your momentum because you got around the right conductors. You got around the right people. And you're on a train, a locomotive that is going somewhere and it's hard to be stopped. You cannot hang out with negative people and expect to live a positive life. Do you feel that, right? 
I love what Lewis says here. Stick around authentic, loving, compassionate, and people who want to serve, right? You can't hang out with chickens and think you're going to go high in life. You're just going to learn how to cluck, right? Like a chicken. You hang out with chickens, you learn how to cluck. That's what the chickens are doing. So that's what you're doing, right? But you hang out with eagles, you're going to soar. Get around eagles, the ones with the eagle eye, the ones that can see the things that others cannot see. Start to change your environment and you automatically change your future. Because the subconscious mind, it is an auto mechanism. It's automatic. There are things that are happening in your life that are below the level of conscious thought. They are like concrete in your mind. I know this because this is, that was me. It still is me. But I'm learning how to get around the right people. I grew up around certain individuals that were negative. I grew up around certain individuals that always had something to say about the next person, always concerned about what the next person was doing, always having something negative to talk about. And I adopted these personalities. It took a while for me to retrain my subconscious mind, but part of that process was getting away from the pigeons, moving away from the chickens, and getting around those eagles that were soaring in life. So don't be afraid to lose or let go of the individuals that are not serving you. Sometimes the things that we are holding on to could be holding us back from everything that wants to embolden us, to empower us for greatness. Remember, good is the enemy of great. Some people don't realize their greatness because they are just fine wherever they are. But if that's not you, don't settle. Everything that settles is at the bottom. Soar. Rise. And finally, associate yourself with people of good quality. For it is better to be alone than in bad company. Take it from me. I've learned how to be alone without being lonely. I've learned how to embrace myself and who I am. Because I realized that it is much better to be by myself, to be alone with no one around me, than to be in bad company. Because at least when you are alone, you can tap in with yourself. You can become your own mentor, your own teacher, your own guru, right? Until someone comes along that matches your frequency, the vibration you have built yourself to, to change. I mean, look at you, you did it. And when you change, it all changes. Sometimes it gets me emotional knowing that life could have been so different. I could have been that same person way back when, always complaining, right? Always finding the negative, not seeing the light, not seeing the clouds, not seeing the sun that was piercing through those God rays coming down, looking to caress me, to kiss my face, and here I was looking at the clouds, seeing the gloominess that I perceived to be gloomy in life, not seeing the forest for the trees, not seeing the big picture. For we cannot see the whole picture when we're stuck inside the frame. You know, you escape the box in life when you realize there is no box. You bend the spoon when you are aware there is no spoon. 
Our only limitation is our imagination. And if you do not believe yourself to be worthy of a different environment, if you feel that your current friends, the people who are not propelling you forward, are the best that you can do, by all means. But if there is an inkling of a thought within your mind and a feeling in your heart that there is a future that is better for you than now, more fulfilling for you than now, get out of that environment. Because we are barely surviving in the wrong environment, but we can thrive in the right environment. Thank you for listening, my friend. Thank you for being here. This is just a word coming from my own experience in life, and I trust that you received a kind message. Thank you so much for being and breathing in this space here. Yes, my friend. Ah, there she is, Elizabeth. She says, a chicken cannot become an eagle. Yes, you're right. You're right, you're right. Nada says, solitude is awesome when you enjoy your own company. Yeah, Lewis says, you cannot give what you do not have. Very, very key. Karen says, if someone can't find the people that understand them, would you recommend solitude over company that ridicules you for being you? Definitely. That's what we were just speaking on. Hey, Haruka. Yeah, definitely. I would recommend solitude. You know, there's a, there's a quote by Blaise Pascal that said, All of humanity's problems stems from our inability to sit by ourselves in a room alone. Now think about that. He said, All of humanity's problems stem from that one thing. Our inability to be by ourselves alone to spend time with ourselves. Many people are afraid to be alone. But you can be alone without being lonely. You can enjoy your own company. I love myself, right? Say that right now. If you're watching this live, even if you're on the replay, say, I love myself. See how that feels in your body. How does that feel to say that? I love myself. Say it one more again. I love myself. One more time for extra credit. I love myself, right? Self-love is not selfish. Self-care is not selfish. We can only give what we have already. We cannot give from an empty cup, right? Somewhat, ah, Nada says, how do you change your environment when you still don't earn enough money to move out? Wonderful question, my friend, and I'll tell you how I did it. Let me give you a short story. So I was once in an environment. <laughs> I was once in an environment, and I won't, I won't say where it is, but I love them. I love them to life. Uh, they're some of, my, some of my family members. And I was in this environment that was so negative. I'm talking pressure coming down on you every day. Something new to say about the woes of life and how everything is going to hell and how nothing is going right and how there's nothing we can do and how there are no solutions and just problem oriented, right? And I was in this environment hearing this negativity doing my best to radiate positivity. And it was a struggle. But you know what I did? Instead of what, doing what I used to do, which was sitting around, playing video games, watching TV, and just wasting time, I would walk every day to the nearby library. Every day. Every single day I would walk, and it'd be a few miles down the road, but I would walk every day to the nearby library, and I would get around books. 
and I would influence my mind with positive content. I would put headphones in my ears, and instead of just blasting music, I would blast coaching. I would blast motivational speakers. I would blast audiobooks. I would blast encouraging messages. And I would head to this library. And you know, one of my family members, he saw me on the road one day. Because he didn't know that I was walking for miles to get to this library every day. And that was where I would spend my time. And also, I was watching mind movies. Type in mind movies on YouTube and you'll find plenty of positive content to visually stimulate your subconscious mind into the future that you are looking for. Just type that in uh, YouTube. Mind movie, right? Like mind movie for success, mind movie for relationships. There's tons and tons of mind movies, right? These are powerful. And my, one of my family members pulled up to me one day, said, hey, cuz, what you doing out here, boy? Like, why are you walking out here? I said, oh, I'm headed to the library. He said, bro, let me give you a ride, man. You crazy. Why are you walking out here? Man, you crazy. It's too hot outside for that, right? It's too hot outside. It's too far away, right? Anybody could see you out here. Anything could happen to you. Get in the car. I'll take you over there, right? And even though I was doing my best for my physical fitness, for my mental fitness, for my emotional fitness, right? There was still something that they found to complain about. Even though they saw me on the rise, even though they saw me elevating, even though they saw me doing different things, they always had something to say. So what I did was I changed my state. I did the best I could to plug in to the right books, the right knowledge, controlling, standing guard, boom, you shall not pass, right? Like Lord of the Rings, standing guard at the gates of my mind, standing guard at the gates of my eyes and my ears and controlling most importantly, the words that I spoke, speaking life and not death. And gradually, my vibration started to rise. Gradually, my frequency started to pick up and gradually, things started to change. They looked at me differently. You know, people who see your light, some people, they shine with you. They see your light and it gives them permission to shine bright. But others, they see your light and it is blinding. They don't want to be around you for a long period of time because you're not complaining like them. You're not playing their game, right? You're not a downer. <laughs> you're on the up and up. So they don't like to be around those individuals for very long because that light is blinding. It's too bright. So this is what happened. And I can't make this up. Circumstances fell in line for me to exit that environment. If you yourself do not take yourself out of a negative environment, but you are remaining positive and remaining firm in that vibration that you are going somewhere in life, and you got to go there here first. You got to believe it before you see it. You won't have to do much. Eventually, things will change. And for me, that is what happened. In fact, it happened so profoundly I cannot make this up, that I am still wanted today in that environment. I will not say where it is, but if I were to go back there today and get pulled over by the cops and they look me up in the system, I'd be arrested on the spot. I'd be thrown in jail because I didn't take myself out of that environment. I was picked up and removed from that environment. 
<laughs> so, circumstances will have it, you know? Stay in your vibration. Don't worry about other people. Don't worry about all the things around you. Worry about you, right? Worry about you. Invest in yourself. Don't invest in that negativity. Don't play into that. Worry about yourself and all will be taken care of. That's what I have to say. So, much love. Thank you so much for being awesome beings here. Thank you so much. Yes, yes. Thank you for receiving it, Haruka. I appreciate you. Haruka says a beautiful message. Awesome, awesome. Hey there, Yogini. Yogini says, tell us about your diet right now. I've been air feasting. So I've been uh, having prana days, or like we like to call them freedom days, uh, aka dry fasting since Thursday. So I haven't had anything since Thursday. We've been dry. But uh, we're breaking the fast today, I believe. So it's been wonderful, you know, just been flowing with the energy. The energy is high, as you can see. So thank you for asking. But usually my diet just consists of, um, it's all liquid. It's uh, coconut water and juice. Those are the things that I consume. So it's almost been a, a full year. In a few more months, it'll be a full year since I've had solid food. Uh, in solitude, you see how much you aren't alone. Yeah, I like that from Echoes of Eternity. You must nurture yourself, says Elizabeth, yeah. Mindset, you got it. So much love, my friend. Thank you all for joining and being here. Much appreciation. Thank you for shining, showing your love, your energy, and breathing with us today. Once again, definitely appreciate all the love and shares. Share this with somebody, even if you're on the replay. Tag somebody who you think would enjoy this message and gain value from this. Ding the bell notification next to my name if you want to be notified whenever we do these live sessions. And check out the Open Palm podcast. That is in the bio up there for your listening pleasure, your daily inspiration, my friend. Streaming on all available platforms, wherever your favorite podcasts are played, you will find mine. Be well, be blessed, be enthused, be enlightened, be encouraged, and enjoy the rest of your day, my friend. We will take care, and we will see you again very, very soon. I have a feeling we will. <laughs> Much love.